Hello, my name is Noah Elkrief, and in this video, I'd like to talk to you about how to stop a panic attack. So the reason why I'm making this video is because as I do one-on-one -on -one sessions with people, I often hear a lot of advice about how to stop panic attacks that actually make panic attacks even stronger. So if you look at your own experience, what happens when you try to stop a panic attack? Well, if you're anything like the people that I work with, when you try to stop it, it gets worse. It gets stronger, we get more trapped in it, and it will become even more powerless when we try to stop it. So why is that? Why does that happen? Well, in order to, to understand how to stop a panic attack, you first need to really get why trying to stop a panic attack makes it worse. So there are five reasons why this happens. And I'm going to talk about each of the five reasons. And as I speak about each reason, I'm also going to give you an action step for what to do to stop creating that effect. So to give you an example for the first reason, okay, just take a moment right now and I want you to try something. I want you to try as hard as you can to not think about oranges. Don't think about what orange juice tastes like. Don't think about what it's like to peel an orange. Don't think about the texture of the orange. Don't think about what an orange feels like, looks like. Don't think about the last time you had an orange. Don't think about orange trees. Just don't think about anything having to do with oranges. Can you do that for a moment? Give it a try. Don't think about orange juice, oranges, juice, anything. How's it going? Probably not so good, right? Not so good. Because when you try not to think about something, that's when you think about it. Trying not to think about something gives more energy to what you're trying to not think about. You see how that happens? So when you try to stop a panic attack, you're just fueling it, giving more energy to the thoughts that are creating it. So you can't control these thoughts by just trying to stop them and push them away. That's not how mind works. So instead of trying to stop them and push them away, as you can see it doesn't work, give up that. That's what you do. Stop trying to get rid of it. Trying to get rid of it fuels it. So allow it to be there. Allow the thoughts to be there. Allow the feeling to be there. Okay? So that's the first part. Right? That you can't control the thoughts. Trying to stop them strengthens them. So instead, allow them to be there. Allow the attack to be there. The second thing is that when you try to stop a panic attack, when you try to stop specific thoughts, what you do is you create a battle, a war in your head. You see, one on the one hand, you think, it's, I'm scared, uh, this situation is going to hurt me, something bad might happen. And on the other hand, you had to stop saying that, stop saying that, it's okay, it's not bad, it's this. And so what happens is, now you have two beliefs colliding. The negative belief that's creating it, and then this positive belief, or this push away belief on top of it, trying to get rid of it. But since it doesn't address the negative belief, it's not like it's getting rid of it, it's just creating a battle, a war. And that war is really, creates even more tension. Right? So like when you try to stop thinking about oranges, so you're thinking about them, another thought says oranges are good, another, well, actually the orange example doesn't work so well. <laughs> but just look, right? When you have negative thoughts and you try to overlay positive ones on top of it, you create a battle. And that's no fun. So instead of creating a battle, let the negative thoughts be there. Let them take over you. Let them say, I'm going to die in this situation. Let them say, this situation is going to ruin me, or this is bad, or I am going to get hurt, or whatever they're saying. Let them say it. Don't try to overlay some positive belief that it's not bad, and it's good, and 
this is okay situation. That just creates a battle. Instead, let it be. So, the third reason why we have these panic attacks, okay, or the third reason why it gets stronger when we try to get rid of it, is because we think the panic attack is bad. It seems obvious it's bad to have a panic attack. It's no good. But, let's look at that for a second. When we think it's bad that we're having it, it fuels it. So is it bad? Let's take a moment and examine that a little closer. So there's a few ways to, to see that it might not necessarily be bad. So one is to separate the facts from our thoughts about the facts. So the facts are we have a specific sensation, a physical sensation in our body. Right? That's the fact. Then a thought on top of the fact says this sensation is good, this sensation is bad. Right? When we have tickle, it says this sensation is good. Cut, that sensation is bad. But bad doesn't exist as part of the facts. The sensation just is what it is. End of story. It's not that it's bad, it just is. Right? But it's hard to see that when it's happening. So I'm going to give you a couple other examples. So, you've, I'm sure you've had stomach aches from time to time. So in the midst of a stomach ache, a light stomach ache, Right? It seems that it's creating suffering, it's making you unhappy. But, if you're in the half the stomach ache and then you do something fun, maybe you eat your favorite dessert or have your favorite meal or watch your favorite movie or go play with friends or uh, spend time with your partner, if you do something really enjoyable or play a sport, have you noticed you're able to enjoy yourself? All of a sudden you stop thinking about the stomach ache and then it no longer bothers you. It may still be there, but it's not taking your attention. You don't have any thoughts about it, so you're able to be in peace even in the midst of this physical sensation. So the same is true with a panic attack. It's just a physical sensation. In the midst of any sensation, cut, bruise, stomach ache, we can still be in peace. So, just notice the sensations. Let the sensations be there. And notice, it doesn't affect your peace. Tension, anxiety, we think that's the opposite of peace. But those are just sensations. They can't touch our peace. They don't take away our peace unless we confuse them to be who we are. Unless we confuse the tension to be, it's my tension, I am in tension. It's just sensations in the body. So let them be there and just notice them. So another way to look at the feelings in our body is through this example. So imagine you break your leg, okay? So when you have that pain, it seems so bad, and it's the pain, I don't like it, it's bad that I broke my leg. That's what we would assume, right? When we break our leg, we're thinking of all the bad effects, and it's bad to be in pain. But look, imagine six months later, it turns out that while you were in the hospital, you met somebody that changed your life. While you were off from work, you realized that that job wasn't right for you and you found a new job. While you were off from work, you spent so much time reading self-help books that you were so much happier. Or basically, after six months, you were just much happier. So now, looking back, was it good or bad that you broke your leg? Well, if you're happier, of course you would say it was good that I broke my leg. It was good for my life. So in the moment, it, we label it bad. But when we label it bad, it's because we're ignoring all the effects. We're saying it is bad, but how do I know what all the effects are? Is it possible this will lead to more happiness? So, in the midst of a panic attack, we're labeling it bad, saying this will have a bad impact on my life. It's bad that it's happening. And it really, really seems that way, and I get that. But if it's possible, ask yourself, do I know that this feeling is bad for my life? Is it possible that it will lead to more happiness in my life? Is it possible that this will go and I'll be happy again? How do I know that it's bad? So if we can see that we don't know whether this feeling is bad, or that bad doesn't exist as part of the facts and it's not even real, then all of a sudden the panic attack relaxes a little because we don't know that it's bad to be feeling it. Or the feeling persists, the sensations persist, but yet we can be in peace in the midst of the sensations. 
So now for the fourth reason. The fourth reason that the panic attack gets stronger when we, once we start experiencing it is because we think it means something about us. So when we have a panic attack, we think it means that I'm stupid, it means there's something wrong with me, it means I'm not making any progress, it means I'm never going to get better. Right? So all these thoughts make it worse. But how do you know it means any of that? So when we say it means something about us, we're saying I am to blame for this. If we say, I'm stupid for experiencing it, I'm weak for experiencing it, there's something wrong with me for experiencing it, we're saying, I am to blame for it. But are you to blame for it? Look, do you control the thoughts that arise in your mind? Look, what's the next thought to pop up? Did I pick that? Did I put it there? Do I want to be happy or sad? Happy or anxious? Well, of course, happy. So if I want to be happy, wouldn't I only choose to think positive thoughts? Yes, of course. If we controlled our thoughts, we would only choose happy thoughts, positive thoughts. But clearly that's not the case. We constantly think negatively. Everybody, not just you, everybody thinks negatively because they don't control their thoughts. They don't pick which thoughts come up and they don't pick which thoughts go. So just notice, you don't control the thoughts that arise in your mind, <clears throat> right? You don't control them. So when negative thoughts pop up and create this panic attack, it's not your fault. You're not to blame for it. It doesn't mean anything about you. It really doesn't. I'm not just saying that. If we don't control the thoughts that arise in our mind, then we don't control the feeling that those thoughts create. And if we don't control the feeling that we're not to blame for it, it doesn't mean we're weak, stupid, wrong, bad, any of that. It just popped up. If, we, if it pops up, we're meant to experience it. It's okay. And then the other thought we have about what it means about us is this means we're not making progress or this means that it's always going to be this way. But do you know that's true? Is it possible that tomorrow you'll be in peace and you'll never have another panic attack? Is it possible that this panic attack will lead you to do something which helps your life? We don't know any of that. All we know is this moment. When a panic attack arises, we just be with it. It doesn't mean anything about me. It's just happening. When it starts to rain, we just take it. It doesn't mean anything about us. Same thing with a panic attack. It just arises. Okay, it will come, it will go. It always goes, right? It always goes. So let it run its course. There's nothing you can do not to blame for it. And the fifth reason is because the fifth reason that the panic attack strengthens once we have it is we're worried about what other people think. Right? We're worried that the people around us will think we're crazy or something. But if you had a broken leg, if somebody crashed into you, would you worry about what other people think that you're walking around with a broken leg? Or if you had a disease, if you had cancer, would you worry that they think you're crazy for having cancer? No, neither of these you'd worry about what people think. And the reason why is because you know you're not to blame for either of these. You know that neither of these ailments to your body signify anything about you. You're not at fault for cancer. You're not at fault for a broken leg. So that's why you don't worry about what people think. But the same is true with panic attack. It doesn't mean anything about you, as we just saw. You don't control the thoughts that come. You don't control the, the feelings that are created by these thoughts. So if people judge you for it, okay, it doesn't mean anything about you. They're just misinformed. They're just confused. They just don't know any better. It's okay. So to run through that real quick, right? when your panic attack comes, don't try to stop it. That just strengthens it. Don't try to say, this is good. That just... This situation isn't bad and the situation won't hurt me. That just creates a battle. You don't need to say that this is bad because you don't know that the feelings are bad. They just are what they are. And you don't need to say that this means something about you because it doesn't mean anything about you. That's just thoughts. And when you worry about what other people think, instead just see, I'm not to blame for this. It has nothing to do with me. So overall, how to stop a panic attack? Let it be there. Allow it to be there. Just notice the sensations. Be aware of them. Allow the thoughts to come and to go. Don't try to change it. And then watch what happens. It will either dissolve on its own without you trying to stop it, or you can be relaxed 
in the midst of the body feeling tense. So I hope that helps. And please let me know if you have any questions or let me know how it works for you the next time a panic attack comes. So thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next video.